Be warned now, I do have a website, and much more, for this series. I'm also doing a series on Adobe After Effects, and that shall be posted much later. Of course, not all of this can be posted at once, and some things shall be left out that I say will come in the future. Or not left out, but shall not be posted at the time that you see this video. If you see it in the early stages. I'll also have download links. Most of my download links, incorporated, and including my own source files, created by me, and solely by me, shall be in the download links. Thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Okay, guys. Today we will be learning how to edit with Adobe Premiere Pro. And things you'll be learning in lesson one is how to import files, how to use the project window or project view, viewing and adjusting certain things, and creating new elements. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to need to open up Adobe Premiere Pro. So, whoopsie. Anyways, that's not of importance. It's not like I care that y'all know that I'm using um, Camtasia to record all this. I get a bunch of projects and I'm going to go to a new project. Whatever you're using, pick this. This is very important, but this is not what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to edit. But these normally go hand in hand because this has to do with the importing of the video. So I'm not going to be teaching how to import. That will be another video. I will teach you how to import though, but that will be another video. I might not post it for a while. But evidently, if you're looking up how to edit, you already got the video on your computer. So, let's continue. Come up with something for me. It's going to be... Editing... Your math. Which isn't, of course, how you spell it, but you know, it's a shortened version. So, no, I'll just put pre. Editing pre-01. And you may ask, why did he do 0, 1? Well, I'll teach you this now. The way your computer runs is, if you put 1, then it's eventually going to, on its own, put a 0 behind that 1. And then it'll get mixed up and misplaced with the 10s and the 11s, if you go that far. So what you should automatically want to do is put a 1 there, so later on your computer doesn't automatically put a 0 up here, and jack everything up. And that goes for anything you label, not just in Adobe. So let's get started. Click OK. And go on. Now as you can see, all of this. You know, you got all this here. And you can move it all around, yay. No, I'll teach you about that later. But mainly the project windows is what I'm going to teach you first. As you can see, we can move around the project windows. This isn't one of our subjects, but... You can move around the project windows, and as you can see, put them in different places, and you can add windows that aren't already there that just give you extra information, like the histories window, which I already have. If you ever want to just, you know, not hit Control Z, which if you don't already know, takes you a step back and just about everything, like if you accidentally on your desktop. And. Oh no! Oh, I think that normally works. Some things it doesn't work with, though. Some it does. So let's get back to the main point. My main point here is... Is, you know... If you want to, you can go to Window, Workspace, go down to Save Workspace. Name. Editing pre work work space. I don't need free workspace. And I go to save and anytime I want to pull out this arrangement of windows, there it is. Quite handy if you ask me. So now I'm going to teach you how to import. You go to file, import, and it says control I right there, I'll teach you. All these things have things beside them. That is if you know you're right here and you just want to ultimately press control I. But this is beginner friendly video, so I'm not going to get into that. So we're just going to go to File, Import, and you will pick any file. Normally you're going to start out on your desktop, 
and it's best to have in your computer, though I believe that in a while I probably should start using it again, a drive all of its own. You should probably go and look up somebody else's tutorial videos because I'm not going to show you how to make a drive of your own. Name, video, whatever you want to call it. And have all your images. Like here's the project I'm doing for Derby. After Effects stuff, and jigs, Firefox. And you know, any odd projects you might have. And your audio, it's all going to go in here. And if you're searching for a specific type of file, like on your desktop you have just this one type of file and you don't have to search through like the millions of things on your desktop, you can go in here and you just click on that. I myself always do all supported files because my stuff's normally pretty dang organized. So now we're going to go to video. And we're going to go to Zach folder, which I'll probably be using this in a lot of my tutorial videos. Um, I think this also has the fail in it and the actual video. This is for an old project. So now you have this. But, oh no, I can't do anything with it. I can't edit. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, you simply got to click it and drag it down here. As you can see, the pretty thing small. Oh no, how am I going to edit that precisely? See this down here? This enlarges your view of a clip. Now, as you can see, this expands. This has to do with this. That's frames. A frame is like a picture. And there are normally 30, well, approximately 30 frames per second. This is two seconds. This is a minute. And this is an hour. As you can see, they're all done by the two systems as well. So if I wanna, if I really wanted to, if I was doing like precise, precise editing, I zoom all the way in, and that is frame by frame, picture by picture. As you can see up here, it's also changing. That's because that's what it actually looks like. Your effects and everything will show up here. And look at that nice clean picture by picture shade. Bam! And really, if you wanted to, you could take video like natural video like this and slow it down. But yeah, it's really hard to move. But if you want to, you can use the plus and minus symbols to move this around. You can also use your arrow keys to move around in it. So as you can see, now if you look up in the video thing, it shows us again. You can reverse it this way pretty coolly too. So, yeah, that's how you import things. Give me a moment, I gotta go and check something. Okay, we're back, even though y'all probably didn't really experience any time wait. But, okay, so, yeah, we got all the view. And now I'll teach you this. You can press the space bar and it will start to play the video from where this little, I like to call the timer, is on and it will stop when all the clips are over. So, yeah, we got that. And we're going to import another thing. Oh no, importation. Um, import this. Now, how do we get two clips to go together, Master Guru? Well, Master Guru will tell you. As you can see, it's snap on. Snap, snap, snap. And now, as you can see, when we play, they go hand in hand. Woo! Y'all did it, guys! Yes! Beastly. But so y'all might be thinking, what if there are parts that we don't want? Like, you know, the failure right here. Where we started recording prematurely and I was teaching her what to do. And she realized that we were recording. Well, what you do to this is you find... The best way to do this is frame by frame. This is only if you're like really obsessed about this kind of stuff, which I am. Well, it's not exactly frame by frame, but you know, you come in to about the exact spot you want it using the arrow keys. You get about where you are using the arrow keys by normally playing it, but like here seems like a pretty good starting spot. 
So, we come over here and look, the razor tool! Yay! And there you go. Now, zoom out. As you can see, it hasn't combined these clips or anything, so this is a whole clip on its own. The whole failure is a clip of its own now. And as a clip of its own, you can delete it. And then this just expands it, like that would bring back what you just deleted. But we don't want that, so we're going to go Control Z. Bring that back, grab it by the middle normally, and snap it together. Or, if you're really precise and you have a bunch of different clips <coughs> behind it, you come over to this called the Track Select Tool, and you grab it in all the files behind it. Let's, like, let's say we have another Final Clash behind it. You take this, and now all the files behind it are moved. And now you go back to your select tool. Click out of those. If you ever wanted to like delete the audio, but the video is still attached to it somehow, this is when you click the right button. Then you go to unlink video and audio. And now let's say I want to replace and dub over this audio. I just delete it using the delete button. Or if you want to get all tricky, control Z. You could go in and clear and blah blah blah. But it all does the same thing. Or like let's well, yeah, that's just about it. If you press the space bar, I'll teach you this now, and then that instead of having to come over here, as you can see it says space in parentheses. All the way over here you can just press the space bar. This works with YouTube and all your other video players actually. I come to discover after I learn this little trick. Quite neat actually. So yeah. This has been our first video. All links will be in the description. Also, a link to my new site dedicated to just the um, Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects series. And I'll probably be doing Photoshop. I might be. Don't be counting on it, guys. I might be. We'll see how things go. We'll see how popular these two series get. So, I'll see you guys. Bye!